Deidre. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm well, and I don't have a barky puppy so far. <laughs> you don't have a what? A barking puppy today. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> oh, that's great. And um, this wonderful oh. person here, Candace Kahn, that's my mom. Hey, oh. mom. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hey, Hi, Nancy, Nancy, where are you driving to? Hey, Peter. I for East is on the right. <laughs> it's somewhere on the right. <laughs> Nancy, I see you're, you're visiting us uh, while you're driving today. Be careful. Okay. And we are at two o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Ooh, I'm getting kickback feedback. Hold on. I need everybody to mute themselves. Let me see if that will do it. Let's see. Mute. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Now I don't have any more kickback, so that should work. Okay, so welcome to day two. Thank you so much for all being here. Um, I will unmute you when when we have participation, but for some reason I'm getting a lot of kickback uh, when you guys are unmuted. So I'm gonna mute everybody for the moment. And uh, so yesterday we talked about being you. And today, um, before we get started, I wanted to open up the mic for anybody. You can just raise your hand or you know either physically or push the little hand button. For anybody who wants to share about what impacted them or what they're taking from yesterday um, and what, if anything, changed for you about the way you're thinking about visibility and being yourself. Uh, because again, we talked about how it's getting to you and accepting who you are, warts and all, <laughs> mistakes and all, and how people actually will gravitate to that and learn to trust you from, from being that way. Um, so is there anybody that wants to share from yesterday? Jan, let me unmute you. Oh, looks like I can only ask you to unmute. You can mute, unmute yourself. I'm sorry. Here we go. <laughs> can everybody hear me? Oh, yeah. So when we came in yesterday, you said, what was my biggest challenge? And I was like leaning towards the tech side of things. And I didn't really think I had a challenge. Because I've been somebody who's been out there for a long time publicly. And you and me both, Jan. <laughs> yeah. And so I really didn't think I had any problems with authenticity. But then I started to think a little bit. I think at the end of the session yesterday, I had this aha moment that I, I talked a little bit about showing my mess, you know? Yeah. But then I took it a step further today when I did my test video and I tried something new and then I showed it to my husband. I said, what do you think? He's like, I think this is one of the best videos that you've done. <laughs> and because it was more me and because I told a story bringing in like who I am and why I've done what I've done. And I showed it and I wasn't afraid. And at the end, I did show something that I would normally not show. And kind of said to everyone, you know, like, okay, and here's the reason why. And I did that for the class exercise. But I learned tremendously um, that I had more to learn. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Thanks. And I, I think that for the rest of our lives, we always have something to learn. And it surprises us when we do, but uh, we definitely do. Anybody else have anything to share from yesterday? Okay. If not, we're just going to go ahead and start on today where i put my notes there we go so today we're going to talk about the be bold portion remember i told you that everything that i teach falls under those three categories of be bold be you and be known uh, we talked about the you yesterday because that is kind of the beginning step and today we're going to get a little bit deeper because being bold is really kind of a stuck point for a lot of people um, so it's, it's deeper work and in the process, just like yesterday, and I forgot to mention this at the onset of the workshop yesterday, that on occasion, when it makes sense, I will bring up my mastermind or coaching just because it makes sense for where you can delve deeper. 
Again, not a big sales pitch, just I am going to bring it up every once in a while when it makes sense. On the third day, at, on the, tomorrow at the end of the day, I will present my mastermind for those of you that are interested. But again, not a pitch until the very end. And that is only if you're interested and then you can stay and learn more about that. But today, um, we're going to talk about being bold. And here's one of the things that happens when you start making bold decisions and moving forward in a different way for yourself is that there are going to be some people <laughs> piece of paper. Oh, here we go. So there are going to be some people, I used to do this on the computer, but for some reason my Zoom keeps crashing as we'd noticed yesterday. So we're not, not going to do that. Right. And I think, let me see, let me make sure you can see this. Yeah, there we go. So you know, you and all your, all the people that are at your level are standing over here. So you're all the same level of bold or the same level, whatever in your business. And the moment you try to do something bold or different, right, and cross over here where there's less people, let's say that, for example, you wanted to do um, a YouTube channel or uh, write a book or whatever that is, that step, that movement over into this new area, what happens is these people that see you start making bold movements or something different is they'll pull on you, right? They'll pull on you and say, hey, what are you doing? Come back here. Come back to the dark side. <laughs> It's, and it's not because they don't want you to succeed or want you to do something different or want you to be better. Well, some may not. But for the most part, the reason is that they see something in themselves that they can't imagine overcoming. And so subconsciously, they'll pull you back or it's all out of caring. I didn't do that or you might get hurt. Right. So I failed at that and I don't want you to fail at that. Or that's that's really cool. Some people can do that, but it's not necessarily for you. Do you really think you can make that happen? Those kinds of things come out. I'm I'm just forewarning you because as we get into some of this work where we're talking about making bold steps and moving forward, that can happen. It's just normal. Um, it's just the way we're wired. And we'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end because I, I have a story about that. But it's not, it's not necessarily against who you are personally. It's just people wanting to protect you or not wanting you to go to, to a place they're not ready for. Um, sometimes people can see a failing in themselves. I know that when I started doing some of this deeper work, um, changing who I was so that I could present myself on camera without having a constant script. Um, and again, I know it's a teleprompter class. We're going to go all about how to use the teleprompter tomorrow. But my goal for anybody that does any deeper work with me is to get you to, to trust yourself enough not to have to use a teleprompter. So we're going to talk about how, oh, somebody's in the waiting room so sorry admit admit okay for so for those of you that just walked in i am so sorry that you're sitting there in the in the uh waiting room my apologies so you are here and it is the class and we are have started everything's been recorded so if anything in the beginning you can get again so how is one of the things we talked about this yesterday is how is anybody supposed to be themselves openly and honestly the flavor of themselves and everything about who they are and not be dragged down and they and and you will that it, it just happens even your video jan i got to see it right before i got over here and it's great but there's always going to be somebody out there. And the bigger you get, the more somebody's going to say, oh, well, you know, if you had just done it this way or your zucchinis, why in the world did you put salt in there, Jan? I mean, why did you do that now? I mean, you could just salt it when it comes in. You know, it's just gonna, because people don't have anything better to do with their lives. And so we have to find a way in everything that we do, especially as you're revealing more of yourself, 
how do you step back and separate yourself? I know one of the things we talked about yesterday was passion and passion being a part of it. I think that was Jacqueline that was talking about being passion. We talked about how that really isn't enough because even with all the passion in the world, you can get beat down from things that people are saying, from the comments. And so I want to talk about something that I actually wrote about a long time ago. Um, and Jan, you may be familiar with this. This is uh, my book, The Bold Factor. And in it, and it's so interesting that it still prevails today, is that while passion is a part of it, there are other keys. And so I want to talk about those three things or four things, sorry, four things. So one, if whatever it is that you want to do in your marketing or in your business or in your personal life, whatever it is, right, there's, there's a goal in mind. And I know that one of the things that uh, was prevailing for a long time was uh, SMART goals right? You've heard of SMART goals. Everybody's heard of SMART goals. Um, so SMART goals for those, I don't think anybody didn't uh, or said they didn't know it, but SMART goals are, you know, specific, measurable, attainable, or actionable, um, SMART, realistic, and time-bound. And the problem with that is that's great for if you have something that you need that you need to be, have done this week, but it doesn't work for larger goals. It doesn't work for anything major. For example, if uh, you look at Roger Bannister breaking the four minute mile, if prior to breaking the four minute mile, he had decided he was gonna put that into a smart goal, it would fail. He wouldn't be able to make that a goal because it can't be time bound. <laughs> you can't, when am I gonna break the four minute mile? Well, it's not possible. So I can't put a time on it, right? It's certainly not realistic. How about uh, Disney, right? Creating Disney World or Disneyland. Uh, everybody thought that Walt Disney was insane. He was just a lunatic. Who in the world is going to take their kids to a theme park? And it was difficult for him to get financing. And look at it. It's crazy. He would not have been able to create Disneyland if it used SMART goals. So what do you do? So I created this thing called um, bold goals or the bold factor, but it applies for any time that you want to do something that pushes you outside of your comfort zone, uh, which of course a big goal would do. So I'm going to share these things from that. So the B in the bold, in bold, right? This is the four things. The B stands for big, bodacious, and ballsy. So whatever it is that your goal is. So if, again, if it's writing a book or you want to have a YouTube channel or you want to have a weekly show or I'm going to um, um, create a, a, a Facebook group where I'm going to bring people to, whatever that is, I'm going to be a speaker and I'm going to speak. So Whatever that big goal is, it has to be big enough that you're excited about it, that that it's, and this is the passion part. So I'm not going to spend too much part on the passion because I think we kind of got that down yesterday, right? You have to be passionate about where it is you're going, what it is you're doing, and what you're trying to share. The next part of this is what I call the responsibility part or owning your outcomes, so easy and especially with how marketing has changed and how AI has changed the marketplace um, there is there are a lot of people saying well I can't do this because of AI or this is happening because of AI or I can't do this because of who I am and every time you come up with an excuse for where you are right now You, it means that you are going to stay stuck there because then you're putting the responsibility of getting out of your hole in somebody else's hand as well. It doesn't work both ways. If it's somebody else's fault that you are where you are, then you have to wait for somebody else to get you out of where you are. But if you take responsibility for where you are in your marketing or wherever it is that you are in your life and your business, then 
you can also take responsibility for moving forward. You know that it's your responsibility. So it's a huge part in this that wherever it is that you're trying to go, and in this, we're talking about getting on video and putting yourself out there, who you are at the core, and being able to use that as a differentiator from you and all of the other people that are following you. You have to own that where you are right now is because of you. And then when you move forward, it can also be because of you. And that's incredibly important to hold on to as you're moving through this process. The L stands for legendary love. And this is a, a few different things. And when I'm talking about legendary love, I'm talking about you do need to love your goal, what it is that you're trying to do, going back to that passion, right? You have to have passion for where it is you're trying to go, the people you're trying to help, the people you're trying to serve and commit to. That has to be there. You have to love that. But you also have to love yourself. And I don't just mean the ooey gooey love. Mm, I'm so awesome. That's good. <laughs> you do need that. But also the kind of love that says, you know what? I love myself enough that I'm going to make this decision for myself. I'm going to make this decision to do this even though it's hard. Because, because of the love you have yourself, have for yourself. It's kind of that hard line love. Um, oh, my poor little thing went out. Okay. Um, I have a little little scent that comes out of here and it just turned itself off. Okay, so the fourth part of this is making deliberate decisions and taking decisive action. So I remember the first time I was talking to somebody about this, I sat down in a coffee shop and I was talking about deliberate decisions and taking decisive actions. And she looked at me, I can't remember who it was. And she looked at me and she says, well, they're decisions, aren't they deliberate? Well, that's, that's a good question, <laughs> but, but no, you can make decisions at the, at the snap of a finger and they're not deliberate. For example, let's say that you are thinking about losing weight and before you go to sleep and then you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to start tomorrow. I am determined. I'm going to start tomorrow. And you wake up the next morning and, you know, maybe you overslept slept your alarm and you think, well, okay, I'm still going to do it. And you get up and you don't have clothes out. Right? And you have no idea what you're going to work out, but you know, you pull your clothes on, you go in the other room and now you don't know what you're going to work out. That's not a deliberate decision. <laughs> that was just a fly by the seat of your pants decision. A deliberate decision is a decision that you make that's thoughtful, right? It's deliberate. So I've made this decision. Now, what do I need to put in place? in order to make sure that this decision can happen, that I can make this happen. Because then once you make a deliberate decision, you can actually take decisive action. It's one of the ways that we can get caught up in, in our heads. I know I have done this in the past and, and I'm right. Others of you have done that as well, I'm sure. <laughs> Peter's got two hands up <laughs> that if you don't make a deliberate decision when it when it's time to take the action it just rolls in all of these different ideas well what if I do this well what if I do this and well I could do this and I could do that all because there wasn't deliberate decision in the beginning so now you're having to take action and you're trying to make more decisions when you're actually trying to make take action and it's confusing. And, and there's this stop point where you just get stuck in this cycle. So one of the things to think about is as you're making decisions to move forward, as you make a decision that, oh yeah, I'm going to use a teleprompter, or I'm going to do this, I'm going to meditate in the morning, whatever that is that you're going to be doing, make sure it's deliberate so you're prepared for where it's going to go. Let me make sure I've got this right here. Ah, sacrifice. So another thing to think about um, 
as you're making changes is that there will be sacrifice, right? Anytime you try to make a great change, whatever it is, there's going to be sacrifice. So it's good, or we call it counting the costs, you know, the costs of the decision that you're going to make. So it may be that you're going to sacrifice pride, a way of thinking, comfortableness. Um, Jan, for you, was it comfortable when you were when you were doing the video differently this morning? Um, actually, I did the video twice. The first time I didn't like it. It felt uncomfortable. And the second time I liked it. Okay. But that first, that first time it felt uncomfortable, but you it pushed did. through it. That's I did. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, so now we've got gotten some of the practicalities out of the way. I just want to give you kind of the framework for this. I want to talk about um, there's going to be a little bit of woo in this today. I'm a huge believer in habits. I think habits are a huge way that we change. But the reason I like to talk a little bit about this woo is because of my personal journey. Um, who, one of the things to think about as you're moving forward is who do you want to be? Yesterday, we were talking about who you are right? Who are you? So that you can make sure that you're sharing who you are. But the next thing to think about is who do you want to be? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be in your business? Because you're here because you want to do something different in your business. That's why you're here. Otherwise, you would be off doing those things. So there's something that you're looking for. And in order to get to that next place, right, there's, you have to go to another level because Everything about who you are right now is how you got here. So in order to get to your next level, there there is going to have to be change, right? There's going to have to be something that you have to change about you. And I know for myself, I knew that one of the things, and this, this isn't a business thing, this is a personal thing, but I knew that one of the things that I really wanted to change was I wanted to lose weight. Um, I had gotten very overweight uh, and I wish I could blame it all on COVID but it happened before COVID. COVID just helped it. <laughs> I was, uh, I had gained a considerable amount of weight and I walked around in a ton of anxiety at the same time. And so as, as I'm trying to go through my business, you know, cause there's always other things going on in your life. This is also another major thing. I'm thinking about the weight and how I need to get rid of this. And it's, it's affecting my health. It's constantly caught up in this anxiety, but with all of this anxiety, I absolutely had to have a script. I wasn't comfortable just sharing myself because I was so caught up in anxiety all the time. And I had talked to so many different doctors about getting help for my anxiety and no one would help. <laughs> and it was always, well, you just need to lose weight. Yeah. Great. Thank you. That's very, very helpful. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. So one of the things that I realized is my nervous system needed help because I couldn't stay calm long enough to, to even move into next steps. Or I would think that I had it all down and move into the next step and then be wrought with all of these decision barriers that I thought I had taken care of. Um, I also realized that I wasn't kind to myself. I don't know if um, you ever capture some of the things that you're saying to yourself as you're facing a new challenge or getting into, um, gosh, even just day-to-day -day activities, the things that you say to yourself. You ever find yourself saying absolutely wonderful things about yourself? Most of the time, the comments that we're telling ourselves are negative. Um, and then can be completely demoralizing. And the horrible thing about this is, is that it affects your subconscious. And then your subconscious is telling you all kinds of horrible things. And it's a horrible, vicious cycle. It's garbage in, garbage out. So you're telling yourself horrible things. It makes it really difficult to move forward. Uh, I just had completely self-defeating messages in my head. And then I learned you could change your programming. <laughs> Can't you really? I just couldn't believe it. And this is beyond all the therapy. I've done all the therapy, but to get to a different place where I didn't have negative all of 
the time. Uh, I think, who was it yesterday? Um, was it you, Pam? I can't remember if it was you or if it was somebody else that was mentioning about um, um, sorry, I was talking about, yeah, changing the programming that you were able to change the programming in your head because maybe that was somebody else. But you can absolutely change the programming in your head uh, through subliminal messaging, uh, reading books, meditating. There are all kinds of things that you can do. Um, I did, I'm going to share the things that I did to change the negative programming for myself. One of the things that I did, and I heard this from um, somebody that just mentioned it casually, and I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> more about that. And um, I wear this headband at night. And it has little speakers. And then it hooks up to an MP3 player that plays subliminal messaging. And it's all positive affirmations and things that I want to be saying. I actually had Jenny. I think she's here today. Jenny, are you able to talk? Yes, I am. So Jenny is a hypnotist. And I got in touch with her. And I said, you know, I'd really like to have some subliminal programming. Um, things that I want to change about myself. And she actually, I went through a whole system with her where I answered a bunch of questions and then she created my own personal um, hypnosis taping that I listened to in combined, uh, combined with the other, with the other items that I listened to. Um, and, uh, but that's really cool. And, and, and I would love for you because I, you know, it's just, it's one in me, if I tell you why this stuff works, but I'd love Jenny, if you would share why this works, why does, why does the subliminal messaging work? Well, part of it is because our subconscious doesn't have direct access to the outside world. Oh, and I should preface this. Jenny, Jenny's like super duper smart Jenny, <laughs> and funny. <laughs> Jenny don't used forget to work, the funny. <laughs> don't forget the funny. Jenny used to work for tell 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 a little bit about your background so people know that you're not just Mrs. Woo Woo. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to introduce myself yesterday. I was driving okay. through rainstorms and stuff on uh 417 in Orlando. Woo. Um, so I um got my degree in human factors engineering back when I went to college, and I worked for first I worked for GE and then I worked for Harris for almost a decade. Um, but never really felt like I was a big company corporation kind of girl. So eventually I found a way to help people. So human factors engineering is not something that a lot of people understand, but it's basically designing things, taking engineering concepts to design the processes and the systems and things that people interact with so that that interaction is more efficient, safer, more effective, all those kinds of things. So that, that what I was doing basically in, in my job uh, as a human factors engineer or systems engineer was helping to kind of uniquely customize user interfaces so that it helped people do their jobs better um, at Harris. And so that was nice and people appreciated what I did for them. Um, but I just didn't feel like that was all that I could give. I felt like I could make bigger impacts for people. And so... Um, when I found out, oh, well, it was a whole process. This will be a book someday. Yeah, that's um, okay. But, <laughs> but, I just wanted to know, make sure that people understood that, you know, you actually have a, a background in engineering and human yeah. factors. So you know what you're talking about. And then, so I'd love for you to yeah. share why this works. Yeah. And, and while, before I left Harris, I did 500 hours worth of training to become a hypnotherapist. So it wasn't just like a weekend certification thing where you go for a couple of days and out oh, magically, you know what to do. Um, it took almost a year to do that. So, um, so yeah, the subconscious, the way I think of it is that the subconscious, first of all, isn't just in our mind. It's kind of scattered throughout our body. It's like muscle memory, things like that, that are happening. And even when you think about um, it, really anything that you don't have to consciously think about doing the subconscious is in some way involved in making it happen for you because we only, I mean, the conscious part of our mind is used for, you know, it's even saying the 80, 20 rule applies is being generous <laughs> to say the conscious mind is 20% of what we're doing. The subconscious is running 80% of the show. 
probably even more than that because even things like breathing, heart beating, hair growing, nails growing, uh, forming a scab, all these things are happening in the subconscious. So it's scattered throughout the body. That wisdom, that knowledge is just innate in our being. Um, but it doesn't, the subconscious doesn't specifically have access to the outside world other than through the senses. So in order to convince it that something is different or something is changing, you need to, first of all, have repetition. <laughs> so it's good, like Deidre's saying, to listen to it every night. Um, and typically when you do listen to a subliminal recording or hypnotic recording, there is repetition within the recording as well. So the more your subconscious hears this new story or this new description of what you are thinking or feeling or, or just what your reality is, the more it starts to believe it, basically. And that's how behaviors and habits can shift almost magically. Um, not to say that there's not any effort on your part consciously no, to try to stick effort. with it, because you need to make sure that you listen to a recording consistently for a while, for one thing. Um, and it can help you become more aware of those things. You know, sometimes with people when they start to listen to the recording, the first few days is they just are becoming more aware of some of the habits that they're trying to change instead of it being just like automatic. They now are noticing when they're doing things that, that they don't want to do anymore. And then after a couple more days, it's like, okay, now I cannot do it anymore. I'm, I'm aware of it and I don't have to do it anymore. Awesome. For example. Thank you, Jenny. I really appreciate that. Yeah. So sure. Jenny just did um, a good five minutes of teaching that I don't need to teach now. So that's great. <laughs> I'm so glad that Jenny was here um, because it's, it really is amazing just how much I know that I have noticed that I think differently now. And, and they are things that I have, that I wanted to think differently about. And so it's a, it's a really great avenue to go down. Um, I also wrote down, uh, and this is one of the ways you can also change your subconscious is writing down who you want to be, how you want to be, who you want to be in this world, how you want to be on video, writing it down. And, and here it's a matter of, okay, so it's, it's, who do I want to be like in a year or five years? Who do I, who do I want to be? Who do I want to be in a, a month? Who is that person? And then I wrote this down and then started thinking about myself in those terms and the crazy thing is, is that the change can happen like this you can change very very quickly once you start making these kinds of decisions i also did a I started a daily practice of meditation which also helps me to center myself because you know even before i came on the workshop today i get i get so racked up and nervous <laughs> And it's so crazy because I've been on hundreds of stages and yet this still makes me nervous. And so one of the things that I have to, that I do for myself is meditation, which helps me to stay centered and stay calm and also to stay in touch with my intuition. And the more that I've been able to stay in touch with my intuition, the easier it has been for me to be myself on video, to be myself in all aspects of my life. Um, and also to stand up for myself. Uh, there are interesting things that I've noticed that I was kind of letting happen um, and kind of wash over me. And now I'm kind of standing up for myself. And all of these things have helped because it's changed who I am. Um, you can also change the things you're reading. Watch the things that you're letting get in your head from either social media or the news uh, I can't remember the last time I've watched the news. And I remember somebody said to me once, how are you going to know what's going to happen? What's happening? Trust me, if something big's happening, you're going to know because everybody else is watching the news. So <laughs> I, I always hear about all the big things, but I just don't fill myself with all the negativity. I know one of the things uh, that I did as well, all the anxiety, again, I was, and I was still fighting all this as I'm going through all of this. And I ended up going and getting a, uh, a medical marijuana license, which allowed me to take control of my health. And the beautiful thing was all of these things combined allowed me to calm down enough that I was able to make the decisions I needed to make 
to move my life forward, to move my business forward, to be able to get on video and do the things and say the things I needed to say to connect with people, to have the, the confidence to sit after reading something and get a laugh and then immediately pick up the phone and start recording because in that moment and sharing that intimate moment with people actually brings people to you because they see you in this vulnerable spot and learning something. It doesn't sell. These are connectors. We're going to talk about the different types of videos tomorrow. But I was able to release 65 pounds as a result of all of this. I'm still losing. I'm getting pretty close to 70 now. And it's just amazing what you can do once you start integrating a different mindset into what it is that you do and who you are, because your mind is amazing. Um, as you do these things, as you start making these changes, they will not only be changed the way you think and how you do things, but they'll always, they'll also change you. And the biggest changes happen when you take action. And this is some, this is something that would hold me back a lot, right? Because I'm, I am a, um, a, a recovering, uh, a recovering uh, perfectionist. And so I would think that in order to take my next step, I had everything to be perfect, right? The marketing needs to be perfect. The script needs to be perfect. Everything needs to be just so before I can take the action. Crazy thing is, is that once you take the action, that's when you realize the things that have to change. It's always going to change. It can be as perfect as you think it needs to be the first time out. And the next time you do it, you're going to have to do it different. Because the action makes everything change. So just taking that action. And as you take that action, things are going to change in your own life. Um, and how you react to things is definitely going to be different. Some th some people be angry about the change. I know for myself, um, I was out. Um, hey, mom, are you somewhere where you can you can show your video? Mom, mom's not in the room. Okay, so <laughs> I was on vacation, and uh, my mom was there. That's why I was going to ask her. And my mom was there, and she said. Um, um, my stepfather was there and we have kind of a okay i'm unmuted now you're unmuted can we see you yeah uh, um ugh. <laughs> put yourself okay. on camera mom i brag day. I'm about how i'm able to get I, you on camera now i have a broken wrist oh no showering okay Oh, there's my mom. Look how brave she oh, is. Oh, my glory. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> my mom. What video are you talking about? Huh? What video? Oh, you said what? show. Can you, am I? Huh? I just wanted to see you on video. I wanted to see you. So I wanted oh, to talk oh, about oh. how when we were in Hawaii and, mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to hurt Larry's feelings is, is he, I just wanted to share about how. No, he's not here. He's okay. Not here. So I'm in my studio, I don't, I don't want to hurt his feelings. So yeah. we were on vacation in Hawaii um, earlier this year and I had made a lot of changes for myself. And in the past um, my stepfather and I have had a, a tumultuous relationship and, um, and on this trip, I decided I'm just going to be me right? I'm in this new place and I'm just going to be me. And I'm a pretty damn happy person most of the time. And so I'm just going to be me and I'm having fun. My gosh, I'm in Hawaii. And so I'm hanging out. I'm ha I had a great time. I was having such a good time and I didn't allow anything that was going on with my stepfather, which in the past, because of his personality, I, I always kind of like let his personality pull me down. And I said, I'm not doing that this time. I'm just being me. And it was interesting because my mom said that he came up to my mom and said that being around me made him angry. See, and here's the interesting thing about growth, because it will make some people angry. Now, he's fortunately um, 
aware enough of himself that he realized that the anger was coming, that it was him. It wasn't my fault that he was angry. <laughs> he was angry at me because it showed him where he was lacking and where he was missing joy in his life. And because it showed him that, he lashed out in anger. And so that is a possibility that happens as you move forward, as you grow and get to different places in your life and in your business, um, that you will make some people angry because, again, it shows them where they're missing something. It's not a reflection on you. It's a reflection back on them. I just want you to be prepared for it because, again, this was called release your inner badass. So that is part of this whole process. Um, is But it's really important that as you do that, that you are aware that there are people that will not be happy about your growth and where you're going. Um, but there are just so many amazing things for that. I do want to share one resource. I don't have it available right now, but I will post it in the group um, later. And it's called a validation list. This is something I created for myself uh, because I realized that I, in a lot of in a lot of circumstances, I was looking for outside validation, which is one of the reasons I would get caught up in my head about doing video, right? Because I wanted validation from people, and so I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted it to be the right way. And I wanted to say the right words and I didn't want to damage my reputation. And I didn't want to damage my business. And I didn't want there's all the things <laughs> that we say to ourselves. And I created a validation list. And a validation list is strictly, is just a list of all of the things that you have accomplished in your life to remind yourself of how powerful you are. Because in those moments when you are feeling weak, when you are feeling like you can't do this or um, a comment just derailed you, something somebody says derails you, having a validation list is just one more tool to have in your arsenal. Uh, and I have a, um, a little worksheet that you, that you can use to create your validation sheet and some examples. Um, and it's, it's incredibly beneficial. And then in those moments when you're feeling weak, you can just pick up your sheet and go, oh yeah, I forgot I did that. It's so easy to forget. One of the reasons it's so easy to forget is that when we're in social media or you're out in life, you're on LinkedIn, Facebook, you're seeing everybody's best. And what you see is all the ick that's behind it in your own life, right? Everybody else has their own ick too, but all you see is the, is the pretty. So it's important to have your own validation list to remind yourself that you're just as powerful, if not more powerful than some of the people you're associating with. You just need to remind yourself. So I will upload that for you this afternoon. Yes. Mom. I read something this morning. Uh, Chopek, oh, Deepak Chopra. Deepak, which when you started talking mm -hmm. uh, and it talks about, you know, being yourself, self-referral, and then there's object referral. Now I thought this was interesting. Mm -hmm. The opposite of self-referral is object referral. In object referral, we are always influenced by objects outside the self, which includes situations, circumstances, people, and things. In object referral, we are constantly seeking the approval of others. Our thinking and our behavior are always in anticipation of a response. It is therefore fear-based. Yes. And it goes on and on. And they said, your true self, which is your spirit, your soul is completely free of those things. Yeah. Yay, Deidre. And you probably, thank you, mom. And you probably felt a little bit of that when you did your second take of that video, Jan. Right, because you you seemed a lot more comfortable and you're, I mean, I didn't see the first take, but you seemed so much, I was like, oh, oh, that's Jan. I, I just wanted to go and, and, and come and be with you in the kitchen. 
I mean, it was, it was that kind of feeling. And, and so I'm wondering if you felt some of that. Um, I did. And my first video was, it was stiffer. My, and I do video all the time. But I went in and I said, oh, I'm not going to be stiff. I'm just going to make this video. And it still was stiff. It wasn't until I went back the second time and I just said, you know what? I'm just going to have a good time. I'm just going to have you go. And if it's goofy, it's goofy. It, and no one's going to see it. It's only going on class. Only people in class are going to see it. But then when I showed it to my husband, he's like, what do you mean you're only going to put that in the class? You need to just edit out the part about that. It's, you know, in the class and yeah. put it up there on YouTube. So, yeah. There you go. Good for you. That's awesome. Is there anything that anybody wants to share about uh, today? Anything? Did anything come up for you? Beside my mom and Deepak Chopra? Well, I guess, mom. I just thought of as something else based on what Jan said with her second video. Um, when Deidre helped me build my business, we did a lot of uh, shows together and she did a lot of social media but she made me get on video and because of who she is it was so freeing and we had so much fun we did goofy things it was a trade show for saddles and, and we would put beer in the saddle saddle bags and then I'd come up behind the saddle and pull I the forgot. beer out I was, forgot about the beer laughed, in the saddle bags and, laughed, <laughs> laughed, and all this stuff went on YouTube <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but it helps. As, I've decided. Um, we were yeah, ourselves. Yeah, yeah, and it's really interesting. I decided it was um because Peter and I just did some recent work, and what I realized um is that I am so much better in person than I am across the screen when it comes to helping with you know doing that that initial interview with people, and so that was that was a really good learning lesson. So. Um, yeah, I, 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 that was a, that was a hoot doing those videos. <laughs> That's so funny. Deidre, I look back at them and I say, oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, Jan. If I may add something too, Please. I don't know if you remember this, but this was way a, a million years ago when we used to have a little woman's group and we'd get together and we called it women of wine. And oh one of gosh, the exercises, yeah. we were at your house one time um, one of the exercises we did as a group, which I thought was really just amazing, is I had everybody tear up pieces of paper and write down something positive about another woman in the group. And then we kept them. Well, we shared them with each other. What It was amazing to see what other women thought of you. And then it was also affirming because I would keep those little pieces of paper in my desk drawer and pull them out and it would say something like you know you're funny or you're you know like um you're you're fun to be around or you're um so positive or whatever it was we it was all these little things and it was just so affirming and i just wanted to kind of just put that out there because it's something that it would be real easy to do with any group you're in just share what you think is one positive you know attribute about another person yeah, that's wonderful, Jan. Yeah, we we did that in um, um, the mastermind that Jenny and I used to be in. We sat around and each of us, actually Jenny's in my new mastermind that's starting up, but <laughs> the mastermind that we used to be in, we used to do that. Um, not terribly often, but every once in a while we'd sit down and, and say the positive things we had about each other. And yeah, it's very affirming. Another thing you can add to your validation list is, of course, testimonials. You can put your best testimonials on the validation list. And that that's really great, too. Just to remind yourself, instead of having to go to your website, pick up your piece of paper. Anyone else? Okay, awesome. So tomorrow, we're going to be talking about, um, we're actually going to do the teleprompter tomorrow. So tomorrow, I'm going to talk about the um, different programs that you can use, the types, how to create those scripts for yourself, how you can use a teleprompter as a guide, um, also how to read a script and not look like you're reading a script, uh, which is really the best thing in the world <laughs> because I did that for years. I used scripts um, until I taught myself and pulled myself off being able to use it simply as a guideline 
and not uh, ritualistic following, but it really can help you tremendously. So I'm going to share all the different ways that you can create videos tomorrow, the different formats, whether it's long or shorter, um, what to do with them and how they help you and why short, short videos are great for building visibility, but not necessarily for selling and all the different ways that you can use the different sizes. So that is tomorrow. And at the end of the day, uh, for those of you that are interested in the mastermind, I'll be sharing that as well. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for being here. Um, for tonight, I, I did put the worksheet in the, uh, for yesterday, last night, but today before the program, um, I did put a worksheet in the group and I'll upload the, upload the validation. Oh my gosh, I can't, oh, <laughs> the validation sheet, validation list, um, the recording from today. And then if you didn't do your video, please go ahead and do your video. Remember, it's just introducing yourself, how you serve your clients best, and what one thing did you get out of the class. If you shoot another video about today, then you'll have two entries, and you can still do yesterday's and today's. So Jan and uh, whoever the second person, well, there was somebody else that did a video. My brain. Can't think, I can't think of who it was right now. But anyways, um, both of you will have two entries, but you can go ahead and do yesterday's and today's and you'll have two entries as well. What are the criteria again? It's just um, your name, who, what, how you serve your clients and what did you get out of today's class? Okay, thanks. And then if you do the same for yesterday, then you'll have two entries. Okay. Yeah. So great. And um, if you have any questions at all about video for tomorrow, make sure you bring them. I'll be loaded. I've been shooting videos since 2008, so I have answers. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye.